A World Health Organization report made global headline news in 2004 when it concluded that the life expectancy of a district of Glasgow, known as the Carlton, was just 54. Comprising Glasgow Green, the world famous Barrowlands Ballroom and Barra's Market, the Carlton is a historically poor part of Glasgow's East End, with a range of social problems that this figure shone a light on. Over time, the figure was explained away by a small sample size. The research hadn't applied to all of the Carlton, and just 2,500 people lived in the precise postcode block used. But where did that leave me, a 17-year-old who happened to live in the exact reference point that was making the news across Europe and further afield? This is Think4. Life expectancy is a blunt tool, a sweeping generalisation used to determine the relative health of an area, country or group of people. Clearly, I wasn't being given a limit of 54 in my life, and those already over that age weren't about to disappear. In fact, most people in the Carlton live longer than that figure. But what does it tell us? Well, as an average, it requires people to be below the average to balance up those above it. And that tells us that there are a lot of premature deaths in that area. Some of the reasons for that in the Carlton are the high number of premature deaths from drug overdose and a high number of deaths of people in their 60s from smoking-related conditions, including cancer, and from heart disease linked to alcohol, poor diet, and a lack of exercise. We call these things, smoking, drinking, drugs, and diet, lifestyle choices, because at some level, People choose to smoke or to eat takeaway food and so on. But there's a debate over the extent to which poor health is caused by lifestyle choices or by the poverty that so often accompanies them. You'd be forgiven for asking what poverty has to do with it. In fact, at a basic level, shouldn't a lack of funds make smoking, drinking, drugs and so on too expensive? But that would be to misunderstand what living in poverty is like and the impact that it has on the lives of those who endure it. People often talk of work stress, which is a major killer itself, and causes a whole host of health issues in people who don't address their stress. Now take that work stress and imagine that instead of meeting a deadline for publication or processing a time-sensitive order, the issue at hand is whether you can make the rent, or if you have school uniform for the kids, or what to do about Christmas, since you have no money. Living in poverty is a highly stressful situation. You can't take annual leave from poverty, and so people alleviate it in their own ways. They enjoy a few too many drinks, or they make up for what they lack in other experiences by having a chippy for dinner. It's a small wins and minor escapism for most, but for some, it becomes a real issue and can lead to addictions or to an extremely unhealthy lifestyle. The poorest have the worst health outcomes in the Carlton, Glasgow, Scotland, and across the world. In Scotland, the poorest are more than three times more likely to smoke than the most affluent, seven times more likely to die from an alcohol-related illness, and a third of them are likely to be obese, compared to just a fifth in the richest groups. The links between poverty and poor lifestyle choices are so high that they can't be dismissed as a factor in making them. The impact of toxic stress on our brain chemistry and how that impacts the choices we make can be seen all over places like the Carlton. From street violence to drug addiction and rough sleeping, the use of cigarettes, alcohol, drugs and fast food to alleviate stress have further social consequences and come at a huge cost to society. But sometimes, what seems like a choice can be better described as a coping mechanism, a way of dealing with the stress of poverty. Understanding this is an important part of finding solutions that will work for the people living in poverty and the children growing up in it. This was Think4. Thanks for watching.